to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at radio time code. Now, what is radio time code? Well, it's a signal which is transmitted on a very low frequency, which contains highly accurate time data. In fact, these transmissions are actually fed from atomic clocks. Now here in the UK, they use three atomic clocks used to make sure that the transmitted radio time code is bang on and accurate. Now one of the main uses of this radio time code is clocks, watches, or any other device which displays the time. Now you would have noticed that some clocks, watches, these time devices when sold or advertised, they're advertised as radio controlled. And it's this radio time code, which is the clocks are receiving and setting themselves to the correct time. That's not just clocks which use this transmitted time signal. The BBC used to use it for the pips that we're all familiar with here in the UK. The transport industry also use it for keeping services running on time, like trains. The financial service sectors also use the time signal, specifically banks, which use the signal to calculate to the last second how long they have held interest bearing balances. Now, currently the signal for the UK is broadcast on 60 kilohertz from the Anthorm radio station near Anthorm in Cumbria. Now this signal can be received as far as Northern and Western Europe. Now, interestingly though, this station used to be installed in rugby and I can remember driving past these rugby antennas and wondering what they were used for. Now, don't worry, if you don't live near the UK, you can still receive a radio time code, which will most likely be transmitted from somewhere in your local country. Now, the USA has a couple of frequencies, but they also share 60 kilohertz as a radio time code transmission frequency. Now, here in the UK, the Anthorn radio station transmits this time signal with 17 kilowatts of RF power, which is a huge amount. Now, over in the USA, though, they broadcast under the call sign WWVB with 70 kilowatts of RF power. Now out of interest, the UK station has a call sign of MSF. Now I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go read more about the history and what's happened to that radio time signal over the period of time since it was created back in the early 1900s. Anyhow, so let's go and take a look at this signal and let's see if we can decode it using some software. So in my example, I'm using SDR Uno with an RSPDX, which is then connected to an NFED half wave antenna, which is about 20 meters long. So firstly, you want to tune your radio time signal frequency. And as I'm in the UK, it's 60 kilohertz. Now I've selected a very narrow bandwidth, as you can see here on the screen, and I'm also using USB upper sideband. Now, because we're going to be piping the audio output from SDR Uno to another application where we can decode it, we're going to need VB audio cable. Now, if you haven't already, please go ahead and install VB audio cable and then come back to the video. Now, once VB audio cable is installed, go to the audio output settings in your SDR receiver software and make sure that the audio output is set to VB audio cable. So once you're at this stage, we can load another piece of software called Clock. Now this comes packaged with another application called Multi PSK. And once installed, you can run it separately from the main Multi PSK application. Now I'll leave a link down in the description of where you can download this from. So you would have seen there that I selected the audio sound card input, which would have been VB audio cable. And then I clicked a button that said MSF UK. Now, obviously, depending on where you are in the world, you want to make sure that you click on the correct button for the correct type of format or time code transmission that you want to decode. So you're going to see up the top here, you're going to see the little waterfall and you're going to see a very strong signal, which would be the time code transmission itself. Just click on it so it starts decoding it. And then you're going to see on the right hand side of this software, it says reception of the time frame. And you've got this big rectangular blue kind of indicator. And that is actually indicating that the software is currently receiving a time frame. Now, as it starts to decode the time frame, you're going to see that these empty boxes here that say day of the week, day, month, year, time, etc. They're going to start populating. So as you can see, it's already done the year 2020. Month 2, February, day 25th, which is today. And it's done the hour 16, and now it's going to do the minute 15. So there we go. Quarter past four on the 25th of February, 2020. Now that is decoded a valid frame from our atomic clock transmission uh, Anthorm, otherwise known as the MSF transmission. Now, as you can see, it's actually quite easy to decode this. 
uh, and it doesn't actually need much of a signal. And the signal that I've got here is quite strong. But you can imagine that if you've got a clock or a wristwatch or something uh, that has a really small antenna, then it's probably not going to receive the signal, you know, even a fraction of the uh, signal strength that I've got here. So it'd be interesting to see just how weak that signal can get before it will actually stop decoding it. So if you guys get some success with this, leave a comment down in the comment section below and let me know what country you're in and what frequency that you managed to decode it. Because don't forget, you know, when these signals are, are right down in the low frequency ranges, they can, they can travel for miles. And if the propagation is uh, really good, then it's, you know, you can pick it up around the world. And in fact, when it first started transmitting from the UK, it was actually a global service. So, but like I said earlier, I'll leave some links to the wiki information. We can go ahead and do some more research yourself if you're interested. Anyway, until the next video, guys, you take care and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.